Hello and welcome back to our channel. Have you ever wondered what is on the other side of the moon? I think we all have, and this video will answer this question. But in this video, we will discuss what NASA just discovered, escalating around the moon that terrifies the world, and why nations want to reach the far side of the moon. Watch the video till the very end. Let's start. This is the dark side of the moon. Due to revolution in the moon's orbit, the far side of the moon is the hemisphere that always faces away from Earth, as opposed to the near side. The far side of the moon has rougher terrain than the near side, with more impact craters and fewer flat dark lunar maria seas giving it a look that's similar to other arid regions in the solar system like mercury and callisto the south pole aitken basin is one of the largest craters in the solar system that can be found here the hemisphere has occasionally been referred to as the dark side of the moon where dark is used to refer to unknown rather than lacking sunlight Due to libration, around 18% of the far side is occasionally visible from Earth. The Soviet Luna 3 space mission took pictures of the remaining 82% in 1959, after it had remained undiscovered for all these times. The first atlas of the far side was released in 1960 by the Soviet Academy of Sciences. When the Apollo 8 crew orbited the moon in 1968, they were the first humans to glimpse the far side up close. And due to these lunar mission, NASA made a historic discovery. Water on moon astronomers have argued over the existence of water on Earth's nearest neighbor for centuries. Data from NASA's mission in 2020 proved there is water in the sunlit regions of the lunar surface. Recent findings that supported this idea include Signs of Hydration, 2009, Chandrayaan, Cassini, Deep Impact. In 2009, a variety of satellites allowed for fascinating findings. None of them were built to seek for water on the moon, but the Chandrayaan-1 mission of the Indian Space Research Organization and the Cassini and Deep Impact missions of NASA both found evidence of hydrated minerals in the form of oxygen and hydrogen molecules in the moon's sunlit regions. Researchers were unable to distinguish between hydration caused by hydroxyl, OH, and water. H2O. They also discussed if the time of day affected the amount of hydration. Confirmation of moon water shadowed regions, 2018. The first high-resolution map of the minerals that make up the lunar surface was produced by scientists using information from the Moon Mineralogy Mapper, M3, which was launched by ISRO's Chandrayaan-1. India's Chandrayaan-1 mission carried the NASA instrument in 2009. Multiple confirmed locations of water ice on regions of the moon that are permanently in shadowed regions were found after an analysis of the whole set of data from M3, which was announced in 2018. Confirmation of Moonwater Sunlit Surface, 2020. NASA revealed the finding of water on the Moon's sunlit surface in 2020. The Clavius Crater on the Moon contains water concentrations nearly equal to a 12-ounce bottle of water within a cubic meter of soil, according to data from the Strategic Observatory for Infrared Astronomy, SOFIA. The discovery demonstrated that water was not restricted to icy, dark regions of the lunar surface, but could be found all over the surface, including on parts that were in the sun. First detailed wide area map of water on the moon. 2023. A fresh depiction of the location of water on the moon in 2023 offered suggestions as to how water would be traveling over the surface. The image, created using SOFIA data, stretches to the moon's south pole, where NASA's Artemis missions, including the water-hunting rover Viper, had been created to examine. Where did it come from? Although water is present on both the moon's sunlit and dark sides, many unanswered concerns still remain. Scientists on the moon are still looking into the history and characteristics of water. There is proof that the water on the moon originates from encounters with ancient and modern comets, collisions between icy micrometeorites and the lunar surface, and solar wind interactions with lunar dust. To fully comprehend the past, present, and future of water on the moon, additional study is still required. Moving on, why are nations vying to plant their flags on the dark side of the moon? Many nations have attempted to put their flags in the lunar south pole because of its deep craters and endless darkness. The area is full of mystery, science, and intrigue according to NASA. With Chandrayaan-3, India has become the first nation to softly land a spacecraft in this specific area, with the main objective of depositing a lander and a rover on the moon's highlands near its south pole. After the United States, the Soviet Union, and China, India is now the fourth nation to successfully do a soft landing on the moon. Last week, Luna 25, Russia's first moon landing spacecraft in nearly 50 years, apparently spun out of control before colliding with the moon. The U.S. is reportedly preparing a crewed mission to place people at the location in 2025. Before the end of the decade, China is also preparing to send a mission to the region. The south pole of the moon is thought to have a large reservoir of water ice in continuously shadowed regions and is home to deep craters known as cold traps. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson reportedly stated, 
estimated that the region is much more dangerous than the location of the first moon landing in 1969, according to an article by NBC News. NASA is also said to be preparing for a return to the moon's surface with the Artemis II mission next year. Most lunar missions target the moon's south pole as the landing site because the lunar poles harbor an environment that represents the remarkable diversity on Earth and are strikingly distinct from the familiar middle latitudes. Manish Purohit, a former ISRO scientist involved in the Mangalyaan and Chandrayaan-2 missions, told ABP Live, For a nation, it is not a simple task, though. According to a BBC story, getting equipment from Earth to the moon requires defying the planet's gravitational pull. More rocket and fuel load would be needed for successful landing the larger the equipment. A kilogram of payload to the moon costs the new commercial space businesses about one million dollars, it claimed. The craters provide an unaltered record of the solar system's origins since they have been shielded from sunlight for billions of years. The existence of water on the lunar south pole is extremely important for upcoming space travel, according to TV Venkatas Warren, a scientist at Vigyan Prasar, an independent organization within the Department of Science and Technology. It can be converted into resources such as is drinking water, oxygen, and hydrogen for rocket fuel. Also, the permanently sunlit area in the region has a temperature of around minus 50 to 10 degrees Celsius, which provides better chemical conditions for the electronics on board the rover and lander to work properly, he told PTI. Now let's dive into the reason you clicked on the video. This thing terrifies the world. What terrifies the world? Geologists first hypothesized the existence of a massive far side basin in 1962 based on early Soviet probe images, but it wasn't until 1960 1967, when wide field images from the U.S. Lunar Orbiter program became available, that they realized its true scale. Laser altimeter data from the Apollo 15 and 16 missions revealed that the northern part of this basin was extremely deep, but the topography of the remaining portions of the basin remained unknown because these data were only available along the nearly equatorial ground tracks of the orbiting command and service modules. Before the 1990s, when the moon was visited by the spacecraft Galileo and Clementine, nothing was known about the basin. These missions' multispectral photos revealed that this basin has a darker appearance because it contains more FeO and TO2 than ordinary lunar highlands. This basin is known as the South Pole Aitken Basin. It is one of the solar system's largest known impact craters. It is the moon's largest, oldest, and deepest known basin. In the pre-Nectarian era, it is thought to have originated 4.2 to 4.3 billion years ago. There are thought to be many differences between the near and far side of the moon. One explanation includes geochemical maps collected from the lunar prospector gamma ray spectrometer have shown that the near side hemisphere has a higher concentration of heat producing components, which is one widely accepted explanation for this difference. Although there are other factors that could influence where basalts erupt, such as surface elevation and crustal thickness, these do not explain why the far side South Pole Aitken Basin, which has a thin crust and the lowest elevation on the moon was not as volcanically active as Oceanus Procellarum on the near side, and this has terrified the world, or at least the people related to space and astronomy, as no one knows how large a threat this imposes to our moon or even us humans. And this has given rise to the question, what other mysteries are revolving in our solar system on our dear moon? And that's it for this video. Please click the like and subscribe buttons down below if you found this interesting. To make sure you don't miss any uploads, tap the bell icon, share the video to all and provide all of your feedback feedback in the comments section. See you in the next one.